So we've come to the end. Um, just some things to tidy up. I recommend doing this because if you keep the image and you come back and you see a, a Linux um, partition with a Linux installation, you won't know what Linux it is. So that's a quick and dirty way of seeing that it's a, a Linux release if you view that. Uh, a more standard way of doing it is to put these two files in. Um, I think every distribution I've come across uses the OS release uh, file. Um, I've not found so many that use the LSB one. But if you modify these um, and just put your name in there. So I'll just put kernel text in there. And do the same for the OS release. That just indicates you can, if you can't find the LFS release, then either you haven't put it in or chances are it's not a Linux from scratch. But if you look for one of these, it'll give you more information as to what installation it is, what, what flavor of Linux you've, uh, you're looking at. Get counted, become a number to say that you're a LFS user. Rebooting the system. Um, you can review uh, stuff here. There's recommendations if you want to install firmware for a kernel driver. You might have a driver, for example, a wireless device that might need some firmware to function properly. Uh, we've made sure the password's set for the root user. You might want to review these. Um, and we can log out now and unmount all these partitions, I'll do this all in one go. Um, we need to unmount the boot partition. And finally, we can unmount the LFS partition itself. Um, and as it says here, LFS will boot automatically. Additional resources, there's stuff there about the visors and security again, um, mainly this and the Linux documentation project. Getting started after LFS, if you want to carry on and do BLFS, then there's some information there about what's available. Um, it recommends to use um, or shows how to get LFS host in a troot. So there's a script there to do that. Uh, I tend to like to just use Linux from scratch natively, so I'll try and get an SSH um, daemon up and running in Linux from scratch and then access it remotely. So I've got a graphical environment to copy and paste commands. Um, and it recommends packages there to get you going to do that. Uh, gives you some information. Uh, if you want to see a guided um, tour of how I do it, then you can look at any one of my BLFS guides my videos that I've done. I think the last BLFS I did was 12.0, so it's probably about a year and a half old, um, but it should still be appropriate for 12.3. And then there's uh, appendices there and uh, further information and so on. So all that needs to be done now is to quit this don't need this anymore and just reboot. Close that down and when I reboot, I'm going to remove the USB stick to ensure that that doesn't get booted. And then um, if you remember, you won't see anything while it reboots until the Linux and Scratch screen comes up and hopefully it will get initialized. The HDMI will get initialized. You can actually see something. Um, otherwise, I'll have to access it. Well, no, I can't access it rem remotely. I'll have to maybe take a, a still picture of it or something. So I'm going to leave. Um, I'll restart this. I'll just talk my way through when the screen disappears to tell you what's happening. So there we go. It's going to reboot now. I've unplugged the USB. 
I'm not going to press any options on the start menu because I want it to boot. I've got the grub menu up. I'll press enter. And yes, it's booting. And there you are. You can see it booting straight away. And there we have it. Uh, an LFS 12.3 logon. So I'm going to log on with the root and the password I set. LSCPU. You can see the uh, process. I can't point with that mouse. So I'll use this one. There's the processor that we've been working on. As I said, it's an i7 6 series. Um, you name minus a to see stuff about the kernel and you can see 6.13.4 which is what we built um, some of these options yeah processor vulnerable I think there's an option in the kernel to mitigate that now so it's obviously not been set by default so if you want to use this you might want to um, uh, change that and update those no microcode, so there might not be any microcode on this um, <clears throat> CPU available now because it's about 10 years old, this laptop. Um, so that maybe that that's vulnerable permanently. I'm not sure if there's anything in the kernel to mitigate against that. Um, but yeah, that's it really. There's, um, we can take a look at the GCC version. Um, if I can remember the way to look at the glibc version, yep, there it is there, 2.41, and I was going to do Python, uh, I don't know how to get the Python version, but I'm assuming it's that, okay, so it's Python 3 probably. Yep, there's the version of Python 3, and let's have a go at Perl as well. Yeah, version 5, uh, sorry, Perl 5, version 40, subversion 1. So, yeah, you can see we've got a perfectly working um, Linux from scratch. One last thing I'll do is just, I'll just ping my name server, which is my DNS server, and you can see it's responding with the correct IP address. Um, and I'll try pinging Google to make sure I can get outside. And yes, that's responding as well. So that shows the network's running and working correctly as well. So last thing I'll do is just shut down. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the videos. Appreciate a thumbs up on the videos. Goodbye.